A nuclear flask forged from solid steel and weighing 50 tons. 280 of these arrive at the Sellafield reprocessing plant every year. And how do they know they're safe? Well, much of the half million pound cost of each one is spent in testing. Previous experiments dropping a container from a crane had gone wrong. The flask was full of water and a thin spray had leaked out. After further tests and changes and to prove that they worked, a few months later, a driverless locomotive with three coaches was sent at 100 miles an hour into a flask laid across a test track in Leicestershire. There was some buckling and some scarring on the metal of the flask, but pressure tests proved that the contents, along with the rest of us, were safe. Similar tests go on around the world. A different train in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and a different flask on a stalled lorry. The train hurtles towards the lorry. The train is destroyed, but the flask survives the 80 mile an hour impact with its contents intact. Next, a road crash. A flask on a rocket-powered driverless lorry smashes head-on into concrete. At 60 miles an hour, the flask is unharmed. There's not enough damage to measure. So they load it onto another truck and do it all again, but faster, at 80 miles an hour. They're going to need another truck, and at first, the flask does look as if it's damaged. But it's just a bit of lorry debris, so they put it on a train powered by a rocket sled. Although everything's collapsed around it, the flask itself is fine. So they set fire to it in a pool of burning jet fuel at 1400 degrees Fahrenheit for 90 minutes. The flask kept its cool. It survived everything they threw at it. <laughs> 